Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Taylor Yara Show. We're back. Quick turnaround uh, for me this week. It'll still be the same uh, schedule programming for you all, y'all. Um, I'm flying out to California for a comedy festival. Should be a lot of fun. Uh, by the time you're hearing this, it already happened, and it went well. I achieved all my dreams, and... Uh, it all worked out, um, but I won't have the time to record out there. Well, I'll have the time. I just don't want to lug all my shit out there because uh, it's a pain in the ass flying. My goal is to go out there without a carry-on or a check bag or anything. I just want to be a fucking backpack guy, you know? I'm going to a place that has a washing and drying Oh, that washing, washing and, it has a washing and drying machine. A machine to dry and wash, wash and dry. I don't know how to fucking speak. Um, but yeah, so it's like, you know, I want to be one of those dudes who just throw some shit in a bag and it's just out, you know? A jet setter, if you will. <laughs> what? No, I don't, need a, I don't need a suitcase. Just got my backpack and the clothes on my back, the shoes on my feet, the wind and my non-existent hair, you know? I want to be one of those guys. Um, so I'm in the process right now, actually, of packing, but, you know... Had to take a break, so I was like, oh, yeah, I'm not going to have any fucking time to record out there, so you got to do it now. So we're just flying by the seat of our pants here. Um, took a little break from packing, but I got to do this, because then I still got to go out, because I got to fucking run this set a few more times that I'm going to be doing out there, that I'm actually working on to do something later. It sounds like I have a lot going on, but really I don't. It's like three things, but I don't know. Should be good. Should be a good time. It's so funny. Like, you tell people you're doing, oh, it's oh, it's a comedy festival. Oh, my God, you're doing a comedy? It's a comedy festival? Everybody thinks it's, like, you know, the biggest thing in the world. Really, it's, it's a couple shows in a bar that some, you know, comedian who lives out there probably put together with all these venues because he knows the venues. And it's not, I, I can't imagine it's extremely hard to run a comedy festival just uh, as a baseline, you know, a successful, a good one, a big one, that's got to be, you know, there's a lot of moving parts. And there's a lot of moving parts to this one. I don't want to be disrespectful. But it's essential. I mean, you, there, there's no shortage of, shortage of comedians who will do it. And, you know, if you find a venue, I mean, if you're in a place that's not a city, most bars and restaurants, they have the space, they got the capacity, you know. you All we, we only need, I need fucking five people, eight people to perform in front of. And it's, I'm like, yeah, it's a decent show, you know? So it's like you get 30 in a room and you get a couple of those places all over town, boom, you got a comedy festival. So that's basically what it is. And then if you do well on those shows and whoever the people who are running it, I guess, if they like you, then they'll throw you on kind of like a best of, best of the fest type thing. Um, And that's actually at a performing arts center. It's like a theater in town. So that'll be fun. Um, but you know, I, I just don't, I'm very grateful to be doing it, but it's just not as big as a deal, big of a deal as a lot of people will make it out to be. So I just don't like hyping it up to be something more than it is because it's just another thing, you know? And I don't really like looking at life like that. Like, oh, it's just another, yeah, it's just another stone, just another step on the journey, but it kind of is, you know? Like, it's not, the, there's no one thing where it's like, all right, you, you made it here, so there you go. It's like, no, it never fucking ends. It never ends. So, I don't know, I try to balance that, being like, this isn't the end-all, be-all. We're always looking to improve and blah, 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 blah. And also just, you know, living in the moment, you know? Like, right now I'm thinking about these shows I'm going to have to do in a couple days, when right now I'm here with you people. And by you, I mean I'm alone in my apartment. Um, But, you know, trying to be present. That's the ultimate goal. People talk about that being present. And it's usually the more somebody talks about being present, probably the more annoying they are. You know, that's what I've found. The people who are the most vocal about the work that they do on themselves Aren't those just the worst fucking people to be around? You know what I mean? That's the ultimate, that's the test of true, I guess, uh, you know, like like working on yourself and trying to be better, whether it's 
you know, through meditation or, or working out, you want to, you know, start doing yoga, you pick up a hobby. The hardest part, it seems nowadays, of doing any of those things is just keeping it to your fucking self, isn't it? I mean, I don't do that because I have, uh, you know, a show where I have to fill a half hour every week and it's only me. So I'm going to I'm going to tell you folks some stuff. I'm going to tell you folks some stuff. But for most people, they need I don't do this because I need I need you to tell me how you feel about the fact that I, you know, started playing guitar. I'm just sharing it because it's, you know, it's a part of me. I'm assuming if you're listening, you know, you're somehow interested in this whole situation. So, I don't know. It just makes it harder for me to believe your motivation is actually that you want to be better. You know what I mean? That you want to fucking... Like guitar, for instance, it's kind of different because there's a proven result. You know? There's, there's, it's undeniable. If you learn the guitar, you fucking learn the guitar. But these people that are just like, yeah, I'm trying to balance my energy and be more introspective and try to, uh, you know, just I'm trying to warm my heart center. And they do all this horse shit where it's just like, it, you know, it's it brings on the on the fine line of astrology. And, and, you know, I have some strong feelings about astrology. And it's these types of people who share that kind of shit the most. And I don't know why that upsets me, you know? That's probably a question that I would ask myself. It's a question that my therapist would want me to ask myself were I still seeing her. Um, I didn't leave her, okay? If you remember, if you've been an early listener, she left me. I went to California. One of the last times I went to California, I was like, all right, I'll see you in a few weeks. And then she emailed me saying, hey, I'm no longer a therapist. So, you know, that that's good. But, yeah, I don't know I don't know why it bothers me when I see somebody who's so outspoken about how much work that they're doing on themselves. Because there's something inherently unhealthy about the want to share that. And there's this there's this thing where it's like you can't prove what the mo- what the person's motivation is, so we're just supposed to take you at your word, you know? Because you can say, "Oh, I want to I'm 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 working on myself yada 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 yada." And then you're like, "Well, why the fuck are you telling everybody who gives a shit?" And then the scapegoat that the comment that everybody says is, "Well, I'm putting this out there to hopefully inspire somebody else to do the same." Oh, so now you're a fucking life coach. Oh, you want to be inspirational, you know? And there's a that's a there's another thing that you can't really call anybody else out on. It's these it's these people who are like, "Well, a lot of you have been asking me about my what I eat for breakfast." Hey, no one's asking you. No one's a- and and you know what? And if they are asking you, you know, what the fuck you eat for breakfast? If if somebody's that unhinged, like who who gives a shit? There's clearly something wrong with that person, and I think you're being a little bit of an enabler by just uh, giving them the attention. I don't know. Those people just fucking bother me. You know, I I think that the the best thing that you can do. It's like it's. That's the weird thing about mental health. There's the we it's the weirdest thing where it's like I it's absolutely legitimate. There's so many people that that need to work on their mental health. Everybody does. And I think it's an important thing and it should be encouraged. It should be encouraged. But not everybody should be doing the encouraging. You know what I mean? It should come from people you know. It should come from it should come from not f- your fucking phone. You know what I mean? I think that there's there's people who quote are quote unquote inspiring who have not done jack shit. You know, 
but it's the image that they have. It's the image that they have it all put together. And it infuriates me because I know some of these people and I know it's just horse shit, okay? Just because you put a picture up on Instagram of you sitting Indian style, is that offensive to say? And who the fuck knows anymore? You're sitting cross-legged, um, you know, by a window and the sun is peering in and you have your fucking cappuccino sitting there and you're you're like it looks like you're meditating and your eyes are closed and it's just like it look yeah it looks but then you unpack it it's like who's taking this fucking picture do you have did you call somebody over to take a picture of you sitting there by the window or did you god forbid did you set up a fucking self timer on the windowsill so that you could try to make it seem like you were just mid meditation What's happening in this picture? That's what I want to know. You know? And then you have some horseshit quote, the sun will balance all, you know, we're only confined by the walls we build ourselves. Some horseshit quote that you pulled from fucking, you know, Google or wherever, some other fucking skanks Instagram that's doing the same thing. It's like, hey, quit it, you know? And again, I know this is starting to come off like a me problem. Like I should just, hey, why does it bother you so much? Why does it bother you that these people want to put this out into the world? And maybe they are helping somebody. And maybe if it helps one person, maybe it's all worth it. What does it say about you, Taylor? What You don't have to follow them. You cannot follow their Instagram page. Yeah, but I follow them because I hate them. And I need to be reminded that these fucking people are out there. You know, just sling, you know, because you got to have the hate meter running a little bit at all times, especially if you're a comedian. There needs to be things that constantly upset you. And I need these people in my life so I can be like, are you fucking kidding me? You know, because it, it it's entertaining. It's entertaining to other people, you know? Who says I can't put that out into the world if it's if it entertains one person? Isn't the, am, am I doing that? I'm doing somebody else some good, right? If I make fun of these fucking uh, weirdos. But then I'm sure the weirdos, but I'm sure those people would hear this and then they would thro- they'd throw their inner balance horse shit at me and say that I need it the most, you know? But it's like, you don't fucking know me. You don't know what I do to, to beat down the flames that are coming up. And they're there. <laughs> and, you know, they're there. We all have that, you know, we all have the demon inside. But to me, you know, I listen, I love a I love a good relaxing sit. I love to sit in nature, have a coffee, sit outside, watch the birds chirp. You know, go for a run. That's meditative to me. I like all those things. The difference is I don't have the fucking instinct to 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 make a fucking photo shoot and play it off as if you're just you're peering into my this is my candid life me sitting by the water with a cup of coffee. I do those things. I just don't want to fucking pretend I'm you know Brad Pitt in Ocean's 11 and you're watching my fucking movie right now because that's horseshit, okay? There's a big quote that, you know, people love to throw out there like, oh, well, you know, be nice to everybody because you don't know everybody's suffering from something. That's true. But it should also be don't judge me for being an out-of-control psycho because you don't know the fucking work that I'm doing on myself, okay? You don't know. So don't come off all high and mighty just because you think you got the proof and it's your fucking Instagram feed. If anything, that's the proof of your your own mental fucking shit. I don't know why, the, you know, this topic is always very, it's very touchy for me. It's very people uh, putting out horse shit into the world. It's a very touchy topic for me, even though that's the majority of my podcast is putting out shit into the world and talking about nonsense. But, you know, 
that's uh, that's what it is. Am I a hypocrite because I do this? Is this podcast a version of that? Maybe. It's fucking harder, I'll tell you that. I think it's hard. This is harder than than just sitting by, you know, sitting on a rock with a cup of coffee and taking a picture of it and putting it up there with some quote that you stole. That's fucking easy, dude. Every, anybody can do that. There's a zillion of those, all right? There's also a zillion podcasts. But each one, you know, they're all doing the work. I'm fucking here. I'm here right now. I'm alone. And the clock is ticking, okay? We got six, 64, however many fucking episodes to prove it. All right, I'm doing I'm doing something. And I know you need to prove that you went and sat by a river. So, we're all trying to prove ourselves to who? I don't know. Um See, I don't need fucking therapy. <laughs> Dude, I therapize myself. Is that a word, therapize? No, but you know, Dude, half my therapy sessions were just, I would just argue. I love to argue. I would just, I'd throw something out there and then my therapist would come back and she'd be like, well, why do you think that is? And like, well, do you think maybe this? Therapists are great at that. They're great at, they don't, they're not going to just tell you what they think. They're going to pose it as a question and say, well, do you think maybe this? Or they're going to just, they're just going to keep tugging you and pushing you along until you finally blurt out oh it's because of this and then you know that's how you get there but my problem often is that I will say something and then they'll come back and I will it's so hard for me to resist the urge to I mean I've argued points that I don't agree with just because it's the opposite end of the argument it's fun it's fun to to argue and to make your point I like making my point I mean, that's half, that's fucking, that's comedy, you know? You say something ridiculously silly, and then you try to back it up, and and there's some jokes in there as well, you know? So, yeah, I I mean, I I remember so many sessions where it's just like, I'll just go off on a fucking tangent, and and my therapist would just be sitting there and just, huh, okay. And I'm like, you know what I mean? She's like, huh, uh, yeah, well, well, why, why do you think... Why do you think that it's so e I mean, like to be a good therapist is very hard because you have to listen, you have to engage and you got to remember what this person was going is going through each week and, and all this stuff. But I got to imagine if you wanted to just phone it in as a therapist, you could just fucking wind that person up and just let them go. I mean, especially, especially me. Like, I could, if you just keep giving me, like, a nod to let me know you're listening and you want me to just go off on something, I mean, how long is the therapy session? 45, 50 minutes? You know? That's just, that's one and a half, two podcasts. I could fucking do that. You know what I mean? Especially if I got an audience. I have a one-person audience. All I need is you to give a reaction. I'll, I'll I'll start talking about your fucking reaction for 10 minutes, you know? I can swindle some horse shit. I can spin I could spin a yarn, folks. Let me tell you. Okay? And they don't give a shit. I'm still paying, right? Yeah, I can I can go off on some nonsense. If that's the goal. <sighs> I think it was it was helpful, I guess. It was helpful to get stuff off my chest and then get some feedback. So sometimes you know, there's th- believe it or not, there's certain things that I don't I won't share on the podcast, but they're still building up, you know. They're they're not this isn't quite the the outlet for it. And so sometimes you need therapy. And uh I think everybody needs it. Everybody should just try it once. That's how I feel about stand-up a lot of the times. People will tell me, oh, I could never fucking do that. I, You know, I think it's cool, but, uh, you know, there's no way. It's like, th- there is. Just go to an open mic. Anybody can do a fucking, believe me, anybody can do an open mic. And five minutes, it will seem long the first time if you don't have a lot 
to say, and you'll probably blow through everything you were going to say, but I think it's a, it's a cool thing to put yourself through because it's only five minutes long. You're going to be fine. I guarantee you everybody in the room will not remember you and they don't give a shit. They're probably just thinking about their own set anyway. No one will give a shit if you bomb. If you want to use the safety blanket of just saying, hey, this is my first time doing comedy, everybody will clap, then they'll give you the benefit of the doubt. But if you want a true response, you you don't say any of that. You just go up and you do the five minutes. And I tell everybody, everybody should try it. Do it once and see how you feel. And I think that's how I feel about therapy as well. Everybody should try it because you'll probably you'll probably find the benefit in it. A lot of times you go into therapy and you think you think you know what what's going to be the issue. You're like, "All right, well, if I'm going to talk about anything, I'm probably going to bring up the fact that uh I don't know, whatever it is. Maybe your uncle touched you, maybe uh your dad never built the tree for it, maybe whatever it is. You think like, "Oh, this is definitely going to be the thing." And then just through talking, you realize, oh no, it's this whole, we got this whole other room we didn't even go into. And then you, they're like, oh, session's over. You're like, holy shit, was I just talking about, you know, was I talking about that the whole time? The first couple sessions are a little bit on the surface. They're the things that, you know, it's a lot of day-to-day stuff. Oh, my fucking, uh, my friend borrowed my whatever and I haven't gotten it back yet and, or, or I went to a restaurant and I paid a lot of money and the dumb waiter didn't even know how to use a wine key or, or whatever the thing is. You just start bitching and you don't even realize it's not about the bitching, it's about the why you're bitching. That's always how what it comes down to. Anything I started to complain about, no matter what it was, it could be it could have been, you know, I think I overpaid for this thing at a restaurant. I bought a Swiffer wet jet and I think the thing is a, a worthless piece of crap. It doesn't do anything but just, you know, rub some soap on the ground and call it it doesn't actually clean. It's a real issue I have with it. But whatever it is, it doesn't because she's not going to start talking to you about the Swiffer. She's going to talk to you about what the Swiffer represents. What what is it about this why does that bother you? What is it about the fact that you, you know, let's take both those issues, for example. You got the Swiffer wet jet, and you think it's a, it doesn't clean for shit, okay? Or you paid money at the, at the nice restaurant, and you think the service could have been better. What is that really saying about you? I think it's saying that, you know, you don't like to feel got. You don't like to be taken advantage of. You don't like to, you want justice a little bit. You want retribution. You, you know, you think things, you think things should work the way they're supposed to work. That was a lot of my issues. It all came down to having control over things. It's a lot of people's issues. We all, you know, we all want control, but ultimately we have no control over anything that happens in this life. We think we do, but we don't. And that's kind of how this is. This is the Swiffer. You're promised that the Swiffer will work. It advertises it as so. You saw the stain on the ground and the nice fake mom on television mopped it up. Well, that's going to happen for me. You have your own, but then you go in, and then real life happens, and you go into your own kitchen, and there's that fucking, you know, there's that tomato sauce that's been stuck to the ground under your under your stove for two years, and, you know, there's the coffee from four days ago that's under the thing, and, and you got some crumbs in there as well, and, and, you, and you use it, and it just doesn't work the way you thought it was. You got to do like nine scrubs on the coffee, the tomato sauce, forget about it. It's not even going to scratch the surface on that. And then you go around, you realize you're just pushing dirt and debris around your kitchen, and then you lift up the mop. The thing is somehow filthy, but you feel like nothing's been done. You feel like you were taken advantage of, okay? And, and what can you do? You can't do jack shit because you already bought the fucking thing. You already bought it. 
You spent the money. You can't return it because you opened the box. And it doesn't work. And there's nothing that you can fucking do about it. Now what do you do? And those are the questions that are answered in therapy. Right? And I think that a lot, I think a lot of people would, I think a lot of people would fucking benefit from that. Because they don't realize that that's what they have going on in their life. There's people who have like nine different instances a day just like that, and they don't realize it all boils down to this one issue you have. Let's say you boil it down to you have the control issue. Now you got to figure out why you got the control issue. That's a whole that's a whole other year of shit, you know? And it all, you know, it's like it's the ripple effect. Everybody should fucking figure that shit out so that you don't go out into the world and you're on your way to work and and the subway, you know, it 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 decides it's going to skip your stop. And you're going to be late for work and you lose your fucking mind. Because again, it's another control thing. The subway is not working the way you want it to work, the way it's supposed to work. And there's nothing you can fucking do about it. You're going to be late. There's nothing you can do. So you just got to, you just got to breathe through it. And I think that it would be easy to get through those moments if you understood why. If you understood what was happening in the moment when it was happening, right? So that you didn't go into work all fucking pissed off and then you go into the break room and then somebody, uh, you know, says hello the wrong way and you fucking blow up in their face. And now you're in a meeting with HR. It's all a ripple effect, ladies and gentlemen. That's what I'm trying to say. All right? I think we accomplished a lot here on this episode. I really do, you know? I think that this was probably, maybe it helped no one. But guess what? I think it helped more people than those fucking douchebags on Instagram sipping their coffee next to the river, saying how enlightened they are, all right? They're not helping jack shit. They're not helping anybody. Maybe Maybe I just convinced one person to try out therapy. Hmm? What do you got to say to that? Rebecca, I don't know. I don't know a person named Rebecca. I do know somebody, but I'm not going to say their actual name because people will, people will send me messages. Um, yeah, let's call it, folks, huh? That's the podcast um, this week. Um, if you're listening to this, that means that this Wednesday is the uh, Yarbar Comedy Show. I don't know if... TJ Miller is on the show just yet, but if he might be, I don't know. We haven't confirmed it yet, but by now we'll know uh, if TJ Miller is on the show. He's very funny. We got Pedro Gonzalez. He's very funny. He's been on uh, Colbert, you know. We got Daniel Simonson. We got Daniel Simonson, who's also been on Colbert, one of the funniest people that you know, is working right now. Uh, This guy from fucking Norway, extremely funny. Uh, It's going to be a good show. So come on out to that. Uh, It's going to be a lot of fun. And, you know, I'll see you guys when I see it next week. Thank you always uh, for listening. And, you know, share it with a friend. Say, hey, my buddies, uh, you know, or maybe you don't, maybe you're just a person who doesn't know me and you're listening. And I thank you too. Um, you know, share it with somebody, let somebody in your office know, Hey, there's this fucking dude. He's funny. He rants for like a half hour a week. Um, you know, spread the gospel folks. All right. I appreciate it. We'll see you next week. Bye.